Salutations, I am Jesus, aka Striker. The Scarlet Citadel is one of the original short stories starring the fictional sword and sorcery hero Conan the Cimmerian, written by American author Robert E. Howard and first published in Weird Tales magazine circa January 1933, set in the pseudo-historical Hyborian Age. This story concerns a middle-aged Conan battling rival kingdoms being captured through treachery and escaping from an eldritch dungeon via unexpected aid. The story also includes Sothalanti, an evil wizard whose sorcerer's arts help ensnare King Conan after the Aquilonian army, under the guidance of Conan, has been slain. The barbarian king is taken prisoner and placed in a Kothian dungeon. Below Korshemish, he rescues a sorcerer, Peleus, and escapes, only to find the capital, Terentia, has been taken over by a rival in his absence, and the Kothian army is set to destroy another city. Conan's army is defeated on the plains of Shamu, having answered a plea for help from his ally Amalrus of Ophir who has treacherously joined forces with Strabonus of Kath and the wizard Sothalanti in an attempt to overwhelm Conan's army and capture him. While Strabonus wants the king dead, Sotha wants him alive. With a touch of poison, he paralyzes Conan and has him bound in chains. While Strabonus ordered his general Arbanus to invade Aquilonia through Shamar, both he and the wizard bring Conan to Korshemish, capital of Kath. Conan stands before Strabonus and Amalrus. While they dictate terms, they want him to turn over control of Aquilonia to Prince Arpello of Pelia. Conan scoffs at the kings and insults them, spitting in Amalrus' eye. The enraged king moves closer to kill Conan for his defiance, but Sotha blinds him, reminding the king who the real power is, as Estravanus pretends he doesn't notice. Sotha sends Conan to the dungeon, guarded by his eunuch servant, Shukali, and leaves him in complete darkness. Before going to assist the siege of Shamar, Conan tests his restraints and finds them too strong to break. The stories he has heard of Sotha's dungeons and inhuman experiments strikes fear in the barbarian's heart and it is amplified when he hears a rustling sound. In the shadows, Conan sees a tremendous snake over 80 feet long slither into the chamber. Conan stands motionless as venom drips from the snake's fangs and burns his thigh. Suddenly, the sound of a door opening from inside the prison chamber forces the snake to flee. A gigantic naked black man, who calls Conan by his pirate name, Amra, approaches with the keys and asks what he will pay for them. This is merely a ruse. However, as the man wants Conan dead for killing his brother, during his travels with Belit. Fortunately, just as he's about to deal a killing blow towards Conan, the snake rears up behind him and constricts the man in its coils, causing the keys, along with the sword, to fall onto the floor at Conan's feet. He manages to grasp the keys with his feet and free himself, only to find the door barred from the outside. Shukeli appears outside the barred window and shrieks with laughter. Then, in a flash, Conan stabs through the bars with his sword and instantly skewers Shukeli in the stomach because the barred door can only be opened from the outside and realizes he must go down the same corridor where the snake came in from. Conan creeps down the corridor, ignoring the passages on either side until he hears a sobbing sound and diverts himself towards an adjacent tunnel. 
Immediately, he is horrified upon discovering the source of this weeping, a tentacled, amorphous blob-like creature, who, when it sees Conan, becomes overjoyed with laughter and starts chasing him. The barbarian quickly outpaces it, but trips and drops his torch, thrusting himself into darkness. As he scrambles up before continuing his escape, he creeps along the nearest passage and stops before a large pit in the ground. Obviously, he has gone in the wrong direction, and before he can decide on what to do, Conan senses something unseen, rising from the pit and turns back the way he came. He comes across the final embers of his torch, manages to get it fully lit again, and hurries his way back towards the central corridor, again feeling the invisible presence engulfing him. He flees in sheer horror while hearing the sounds of different monsters and beasts down each tunnel. As Conan is wondering why these beasts won't come out into the central opening, he realizes the giant serpent is already slithering behind him. It seems as though even the monsters are afraid of this serpent. He runs down a side passage and, through the window of a prison door, witnesses a monstrous plant, torture an unconscious captive, entwined within its grasp. Conan enters the cell and slices away the plant's stem, as it hisses while waving its tentacles and blossom at him. Soon, the plant dies upon having its stem chopped away, and the man is freed. He is called Peleus and tells Conan how his rival, Sothalanti, has held him captive for almost a decade. His powers began to return, and he leads Conan back to the entrance. The snake, identified by Peleus as Satha, emerges and moves in to attack. The viper, once it sees Peleus, its eyes widen in terror and it slept away. When they reach the barred door, Peleus reanimates Shukeli's corpse with magic and has him unlock the door. The two go to Sothe's private chambers, where Peleus uses the wizard's crystal ball to show Strabonus' army, laying siege to Shamar and chaos engulfing Tarentia, as with word spreading of Conan's alleged death. Prince Arpello of Pelia has moved to take over the kingdom. Conan laments that the capital is almost a week away by fastest steed, and Stravanus' army lie along the path, but Peleus summons a bat-like creature to fly him directly towards Tarantia. In there, Trocero desperately tried to keep the peace, as rioters and looters, mystically encouraged by Sothalanti to believe Conan is dead, rampage through the streets. Prince Arpello made his play for the crown and managed to get the council surrender. When he won the support of the public, Trocero abandons the city with 1,500 soldiers. Upon realizing he would have to fight the citizens themselves, the chancellor, Publius, had been imprisoned and heavy taxes laid on the merchants of the city, with anyone protesting hanged. Rapidly, armed men from the Pelian army quickly and violently clamp down on any acts of disloyalty within the city. When word spread that the Kothian army had taken Shamar, the people turned to Arpello for reassurance, but he simply drank some wine and laughed at them. When a small insurgency headed by the student Athimides is quelled, the young man is smuggled out of the city to the camp of Trocero to plead with him to return. It's then, with Arpello loudly proclaiming from the ramparts that he is now the king, Conan arrives on the wings of the demon. A shocked Arpello charges Conan, but the true king picks up the prince and throws him off the castle walls. 
the siege of Shamar continues. And although the city is hopelessly outnumbered, its strong walls have prevented it from being entirely overrun. Stravanus grows anxious, as he would like to continue into Aquilonia, but doesn't want to leave his flank unprotected. Suddenly, a bugle is heard, and a galloping army rides from within the country. When Sotha sees Conan leading the charge, he realizes Peleus must have helped. Stravanus frantically sends his men to attack, but the outnumbered Aquilonians burst through the ranks, and Amalrus is trampled to death under the charge. Conan ends up face to face with Stravanus. Stravanus takes one desperate swing at Conan, but is run through immediately. The Kothian army is rooted and slaughtered as Conan turns his attention to Sotha Lanti. Although Sotha hurls magic to Conan, the king laps off the wizard's head, though it still lives and glares to Conan, until a giant eagle swoops down to pick up the head and fly away. The body of Sotha rises and runs off in the direction of the eagle who laughs with the voice of Peleus and Conan. Though grateful for Peleus' help, hopes never to see him again. I sing the praises to Robert E. Howard's Conan's story, The Scarlet Citadel. It shows clear parallels to Howard's only Conan novel, The Peerless, The Hour of the Dragon. Forming the tale's climax, the battle juxtaposes close combat with sweeping scenes of massed armies. In thunderous conflict, the sequences, as uniformly wonderful as they are, surpass the Cimmerians' more personal encounters that do not stop being magnificent. The adventures are among the most memorable that Howard ever put on a page. The Cimmerian comes to startlingly vivid life as Robert has him demonstrate defiance, courage, loyalty, rage, nobility, and humility. In both deeds and in sharp, pithy dialogue, some of the finest and most incredible scenes of dark sorcery in the canon can be found in the Scarlet Citadel, fantastical imaginings that fit the Barbarian Saga. As neatly as a stiletto does his sheath, a well-plotted story, having Robert paying homage to Lovecraft and Clark Ashton Smith, thus creating an even greater world than his Hyborian Age, by also combining it with the Cthulhu mythos. And so, starting at 1932, Weird Tales became a more cohesive creation with a distinct direction and with authors riffing on one another. Crumb, a moron of these wizardly feuds, Peleus has dealt well with me, but I care not if I see him no more.